recognize this gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kingsinger, for however long he chooses. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to my colleagues on the committee. Thank you to our witnesses. Uh, I never expected a day to be <clears throat> quite as emotional for me as it has been. Uh, I've talked to a number of you and gotten to know you. I think it's important to tell you right now, though, you guys may like individually feel a little broken. You guys all talk about the effects you have to deal with and you know, you talk about the impact of that day. But you guys won. You guys held. You know, democracies are not defined by our bad days. We're defined by how we come back from bad, day bad days how we take accountability for that. And for all the overheated rhetoric surrounding this committee, our mission is very simple. It's to find the truth, and it's to ensure accountability. Like most Americans, I'm frustrated that six months after a deadly insurrection breached the United States Capitol for several hours on live television, we still don't know exactly what happened, why? because many in my party have treated this as just another partisan fight. It's toxic and it's a disservice to the officers and their families, to the staff and the employees on the Capitol complex, to the American people who deserve the truth, and to those generations before us who went to war to defend self-governance, because self-governance is at stake. And it's why I agreed to serve on this committee I want to know what happened that day, but more importantly, I want all Americans to be able to trust the work this committee does and get the facts out there free of conspiracy. This cannot continue to be a partisan fight. I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative. But in order to heal from the damage caused that day, we need to call out the facts. It's time to stop the outrage and the conspiracies that fuel the violence and division in this country, and most importantly, we need to reject those that promote it. As a country, it's time to learn from our past mistakes, rebuild stronger so this never happens again, and then we can move onward. And serving on this committee, I'm here to investigate January 6th, not in spite of my membership in the Republican Party, but because of it. Not to win a political fight, but to learn the facts and defend our democracy. Here's what we know. Congress was not prepared on January 6th. We weren't prepared because we never imagined that this could happen. An attack by our own people fostered and encouraged by those granted power through the very system they sought to overturn. That is a lesson. That is not a conspiracy theory or a counter narrative. We don't blame victims. We go after the criminals. Some have concocted a counter narrative to discredit this process on the ground that we didn't, on the grounds that we didn't launch a similar investigation into the urban riots and looting last summer. Mr. Chairman, I was called on to serve during the summer riots as an Air National Guardsman. I condemn those riots and the destruction of property that resulted, but not once. Did I ever feel that the future of self-governance was threatened like I did on January 6th? There is a difference between breaking the law and rejecting the rule of law, between a crime, even grave crimes, and a coup. As we begin our work today, I want to call this committee's attention to the oath of office, an oath not to a party, not to an individual, but to the Constitution that represents all Americans. Everyone in elected office knows how hard it can be sometimes to keep that oath, to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States in the forefront of our minds, what with the political pressures and re-elections always around the corner. But Mr. Chairman, our witnesses today, like every law enforcement officer across the country, took the same oath we did. And on January 6th, the temptation to compromise their oaths didn't come in the form of a campaign check or a threat from leadership or an all-caps tweet. It came in the form of a violent mob. While we on this dais were whisked away from the danger, heroes like those here stood their post before it and paid the price. And we are only here now 
because you guys were here then. Therefore, it's altogether fitting that we begin our investigation of January's lawless attack against the Constitution with these four men who made sure that the attack did not succeed, with those who helped to ensure that democracy held. And I think it's important to remember that you are four with stories, but there are hundreds with stories as well that you represent where you sit. Officer Fanon, I know your passion is to make sure that DC Metro gets the credit it's due. And I thank you for your, I know that you represent the hundreds of officers like Officer Hodges that responded to that call. What I wanna ask, does this feel like old history to any of the four of you? Sometimes I get, you know, we hear out there, it's time to move on, right? It's been six whole months, time to move on. Does this feel like old history and time to move on? You can just say yes or no and... No, no. sir. Uh... Nope. There can be no moving on without accountability. There can be no healing until we make sure this can't happen again. I echo that. You, how do you move on without correcting what happened? Like, Let me ask you all, I, one of the narratives out there, and Officer Fanon, this, it, it triggered something in your testimony when you said it. So there's been this idea that this was not an armed insurrection, and as if somehow that is justification for what happened. We know the hugs and kisses. We know the... It was BLM and Antifa, right? Of course, then you would, I'm sure, want to investigate that if that's the case. Now we've heard maybe the FBI actually started this, but one of the ones that has always held was that this was not an armed insurrection. Officer Dunn, you mentioned that those that stormed the Capitol were very well organized and trained. And let me ask you, and I'll ask actually to all four of you, and Officer Hodges, I know this was part of your job initially before you got, you responded to the Capitol. If in the middle of all that melee, you see somebody with a gun in that crowd, would you be able to go out, apprehend, arrest them, read them their rights, and go through that process? Or was the mission at the moment survival and defense of the Capitol? So I'm asking, is it possible that people maybe had guns? And we've seen that actually there were. But this idea that, well, people weren't arrested with guns at the time, it was raw survival. I'll start with, we can just start on the left. Let me ask you, what, what's your response to that? For those people who continue to downplay this uh, violent attack on our democracy and our officers, uh, I suggest them to look at the videos and, and the footage for now because common things were used as weapons like a baseball bat, a hockey stick, a rebar, a flagpole, uh, including the American flag, uh, pepper spray, bear spray. So you name it, you have all these items and things that were thrown at us and attack and used to attack us. Those are weapons. No matter if it is a, a pen, the way they were using these items, it was to hurt officers. It was to hurt police officers. That, their intent was, was not to say, hey, let me go and find the Republicans or the Democrats in there or the independents. It was every single body that was here in this building, in the Capitol, that their intent was to get them out and hurt them. It would have been a much different outcome had we not stopped them, especially at the lower, lower West Terrace entrance. Even though we, at that time, we didn't know that that was the, that there were other breaches in the Capitol. Our intent was to stop whoever was trying to come in through that door. And those weapons that we used, those were common uh, items. The way they were using it was uh, as weapons. Let me, let me ask too, in kind of my final moments, Sergeant Gunnell, Officer Hodges, you were a uh, Virginia Guardsman, I believe. Fellow guardsman? Yes, sir. At any time in your service in the military, as you know, I'm an air guardsman. Uh, and Sergeant Gunnell, you specifically mentioned your time in Iraq. At any time in your uh, uh, military service, did you 
change how you defended the person to your left or right or how you trained with them based on their political affiliation? No. Whether it was in war or anything? No. No, sir. Uh, my, the way I, I view it at that time, it was I'm an American and the person right next to me is an American and I would do everything possibly for me to defend him and the country at that time. You guys did that? You guys did that in the blue? Yes, sir. And I want to say that is the mission of this committee. We may have our deep differences on other policy issues, but we are all Americans today. And we thank you for holding that line. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.